My name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon, International Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. Jeff Regan, investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery and suspense and adventure in tonight's story of The Man on the Hook. What the newspapers said, George McDonald was the way to get L.A.'s racket boss, Eddie Slogan. Only George McDonald was around. He'd been hiding out all week. The cops wanted him. Grand jury wanted him to testify. The Eddie Slogan mob wanted him. Eddie Slogan was what the grand jury wanted him to testify against. So I had to be the one that found him. That made me a popular guy. Like a clay pigeon at a skeet shooter's convention. The thing got rolling at a bowling alley on Vine Street. My lucky day, looked like. I bowled a strike. I went back to the bench to mark the strike in my score pad. Only something was written on the score pad. In lipstick. Regan, coffee shop counter. Hurry. And pinned to the score pad with a bobby pin was a $100 bill. Well, it be, mister. Coffee? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, no cream. Mind if I sit on the stool, Regan? No. No, sit down. Thanks. Mine's Joe, too, Sonny. Uh, two coffees, all the cream and one. You call coffee Joe. You must have been in the Navy. Sure, duty. Regan, open your hand under the counter. I'm going to put four $100 bills in your hand. With the one pin to the score pad, that makes 500 For which I do what? Find George McDonald. Listen, lady, half the cops in town are looking for McDonald. Not to mention Eddie Slogan. I'm Eddie Slogan's wife. Lady, I'm not a finger man. It's not that. I don't want McDonald for Eddie. What do you want him for? For me, Regan. I love the guy. Sure you do. That's straight. I love him. Get another shammer, sister. Don't be so special, I'll Regan. see you around. Oh? Regan, 500 bucks. Regan? I'll see. Yeah. That is an argument. Yeah. Hey, mister. Is your name Regan? Yeah. Phone for you. Okay, I'll be right there. Regan, we can't talk here. Your car's parked out back in the alley. Hey, you know a lot. I've got eyes. Baby blue. We'll get around to that. Yeah. Okay, see you in my car in five minutes. Thanks, Regan. Thanks. Hey, mister, you gonna answer the phone or do I hang it up? I got it. Hey, this is a place of business. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah? Oh, hello, Jeffrey. Your landlady says you mentioned something about bowling this afternoon, my boy. I'm glad I've located you. So you've located me. Uh, yes. Well, Jeffrey, a splendid client has come our way. Wants to pay us 500 bucks. Why, well, yes, Jeffrey, that's right. Offers to pay our International Detective Bureau $500... To find a missing person, Lan. Yes, Jeffrey. Yes, that's right. Guy named uh, George McDonald. Jeffrey, you astound me. A client has baby blue eyes. Well, uh... Well, now, I can't say that I noticed, Jeffrey. And good legs. Nice, slim, good legs, Lan. Hey, Jeffrey, what are you talking about? You didn't notice the legs? Fat, so you're getting old. You Mr. Halligan had his trousers on, Jeffrey. How could I see his legs? Give me that again. Give you what again? I don't think I understand you, Jeffrey. You mean a guy came to the office to hire us to trace George McDonald? Well, certainly, Jeffrey. Mr. Happy Halligan, the used car king. And gave you 500 bucks? Yeah, that's right. You ought to go see him right away. He's at his used car lot on Beverly Boulevard. He wants you to hurry, Jeffrey. <laughs> My boss, Anthony J. Lyon, didn't have anything more on Happy Halligan, so I hung up the phone and went out back to the alley where my car was parked. Now we had two clients and a thousand bucks in the kitty. All I had to do was find George McDonald, the guy every cop in L.A. and the Eddie Slogan mob had been looking for for a week. It'd be easy. Mrs. Eddie Slogan was waiting for me in my car, all right. But those big, blue, innocent baby eyes were out of place. Like a couple of lambs in a den of tigers. Cigarette? Not my brand. Mind if I do? Light is on the dashboard. Thanks. So you want me to find George McDonald, Mrs. Slogan? My name's Naomi. Yeah. 
I want you to find her. As you like. I've got it. Maybe you know a guy named Happy Halligan. I know him, Regan. Sure. What's Halligan's angle? George McDonald's a used car salesman for Halligan. You must have read that in the papers. Go on. Halligan got in touch with your office today. He wants you to find George. First names now. I told you I was in love with a guy. Why does Halligan want McDonald? Halligan's got ideas too big for his two pants. Halligan and rackets? Mm Mm-hmm. Dime style. And he wants to put on weight. That's it. So he'd like to get his hands on McDonald and put the squeeze on your husband. You're real quick, Regan. Whose side are you on? My side. I heard Halligan was hiring you to look for George. You heard? So Eddie heard. Eddie's got the kind of door around town that's got fast ears. I believe it. Well, Regan, if you do find George McDonald, I want him first. Here's your 500. So long. What's the matter? People scared? Listen, sister, I've got your number. Have you? Well, dial me, Regan, just to make sure. Yeah. Why not? Well, Regan. That's your busy signal? You mean George? You said you loved him. Regan, I'm not a one-party line. Come and see me. Got a place of my own, Beverly Hills. Why do you want McDonald? Because when they get him, Regan, whoever gets him, maybe he'll talk. You mean he might talk about you and him? Eddie wouldn't like that. That adds... That's why you got to get to McDonald first. Regan, I'll see you later. Hey, hey, hold it. Hey! She slammed the door and started to run. There was a back entrance to the bowling alley, and she ducked in and disappeared. Then I looked up into my rear vision mirror, and I saw why Mrs. Eddie Slogan had run. A black sedan had pulled into the alley, five guys in it, hat brims down. <laughs> I gunned out of the alley and turned left on Vine. The black sedan turned after me. There was plenty of traffic on Vine, but I felt conspicuous, like a giraffe in a flea circus. Below Melrose, I dodged into a side street to try to duck the black sedan. I shouldn't have done that. The black sedan crowded me over to the curb. And then a guy with a couple of cold, sawed-off gray eyes got out and opened my car door. Leave town. Eddie Slogan says... Cost him something for my time. Sure. Here. <clears throat> you want something extra for expenses, come around. Any time. We'll be open. No use giving him his change with those four other hoods in the car. But what did I care? A thousand bucks could buy a lot of bandages. I drove on to Happy Halligan's used car lot on Beverly Boulevard. Only after a couple of blocks, the black sedan picked up my trail again. I slowed down in front of Happy Halligan's. The black sedan slowed down behind me. Then I got an idea. I drove right on into the lot. You happy, Halligan? Sure, I'm happy. Okay. No use of getting out of that piece of junk. No trading value. I'm Regan, International Detective Bureau. Lion's eye, huh? That's it. I gave your boss half a grand, says you find George McDonald for me. Oh, five hundred's a big fee. He was a good used car salesman. Sure he was. Yeah, they used to come in here, customers, beg us to sell them a car. Price, no consideration. What do we do? We slug them, we insult them, we give them a hot foot, and they apologize for putting us to so much trouble. Yeah, them was the war years. Now... What about McDonald? Even now, he could sell an Essex hot rod to whistle his mother. What about McDonald? Yeah, you're right, Regan. Ain't why I want him. He cleaned out my till, 4,700 bucks. That why you want him? That's why I want him. Eddie Slogan's wife said different. Eddie Slogan? Seemed to have read that name in the papers. Okay, Halligan. What can you give me on McDonald? Tall, gray temples, 43, athletic... Heard he was a southpaw pitcher in the miners once. Oh, yeah. Served time for larceny. Anything else? 
car over there is the one he beat it in. English model? Demonstrator. We sell them to the picture people. Yeah, McDonald must have ditched the car. Cops picked it up in San Bernardino. Okay. Uh, by the way, is there a back way off your lot, Halligan? Yeah, sure. Well, how about letting me drive something in good condition? We went to the back of the lot, and Halligan gave me the keys to a job with white sidewalls. I drove out the rear exit. I crossed Beverly Boulevard a couple of blocks up, and the black sedan was still out in front of Halligan's. I headed for the press room downtown at police headquarters. I was looking for a little reporter named of Gabby, who's usually got answers to what goes on around town, and parts with him. For cash. Oh, hi, Regan. Hello, Jack. Gabby, you around? Yeah, over there. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Hey, Gabby. Huh? Oh, hi, Ray. Hi. What's it? Information. Eh? Huh? Cash or credit? <laughs> Here's 20. Hey. Hey, thanks, Rick. Thanks. What do you need? I want to know about George McDonald. Huh? What you guys are writing in the papers is plenty of nothing. Well, cops won't let us print what we know. They're afraid we'll tip Slogan. Not that he don't know more than we know. What do we know? Uh, Slogan's mob got a place up past San Bernardino. Where McDonald's car was found? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Places up in the canyon. Well, Slogan and his little playmates took a business competitor up there about a week ago. You know, Ray. They took him up, but they didn't bring him back. The business competitor made the mistake of getting very depressed all of a sudden and shooting himself. Only it turns out there was a witness. McDonald. McDonald. How did the cops get there? Well, there's only one road up to the canyon. Gas station guy at the junction saw McDonald. That all of it? All I know, Rick. McDonald in the rackets? Mm, in and out. Worked for Slogan, but that busted off about five or six months ago. What about a guy named Halligan? Happy? He's in the rackets. So I drove back out to Happy Halligan's. I like to have my clients tell me the truth. It helps me get my work done. But Halligan wasn't around. Neither were the five Slogan trigger men in the black sedan, so I took my own car, picked up the evening papers to see what they had on the hunt for McDonald. They didn't have much, but what they did have was peculiar. The cops had released the fact that some stuff was stolen from the slogan mob up in the canyon. But what was stolen didn't make sense. Phone number pad, gold cigar holder, table cigarette lighter. About nine o'clock at night, I pulled into a gas station in the hills up past San Bernardino. How many, sir? Fill her up. Only, um, wait a second. Yes, sir? I'm looking for George McDonald. Yes, sir? You saw him, huh? About a week ago? Well, I... There's ten bucks in it for you. I... Yeah, I did see him. How'd you know it was McDonald? I described him to the police after they found the dead man up in the canyon. And you identified the car, the English right-hand drive job McDonald was driving? You'd remember that. Yeah, he... Drove right in here, into the station, in the right-hand drive car. Well, he was very nervous, and I guess maybe I acted funny because he pulled a gun on me, leaned out and stuck it up against me. But well, I had OSS training in the war. And you pivoted and grabbed his wrist. Did you get the gun? Yeah. Police said that was positive identification. They traced the serial number to McDonald. But he got away. <laughs> he'd, he'd left his motor running. Okay, I owe you ten bucks. Fill up the tank and we'll see what the total comes to. I couldn't go up the canyon to the Slogan Mob place. Cops had the canyon blockaded. They had a road check halfway down back to San Bernardino, too. Highway patrolman stopped me and flashed his light around the car. Then he went back a couple of cars, pulled up a little ways behind me. Everybody looking for George McDonald. I stuck a cigarette in my mouth and reached for the dashboard lighter, but all I got was the hole. I was out of matches, so I bent down and fell around the floor. That was when the car door jerked open and a guy shoved in on the front seat beside me. All right, drive. This is a gun in your guts. Drive like the devil. You're giving the orders, McDonald. I 
had a thousand bucks worth of George McDonald in my car. Five hundred if I had delivered him to Happy Halligan, the used car king that was trying to get fat in the rackets. And five hundred if I delivered him to Naomi, Mrs. Eddie Slogan. Only Eddie Slogan, big boss of the L.A. Rackets, was looking for Mac. And every cop in L.A. was looking for Mac. And that thing Mac's left hand kept shoving into my side had some eager bullets in it. We exchanged some polite conversation around Azusa, but we didn't get any place till we were pulling into L.A. Hey. Hey, slow down, will you? That's a cop car we just passed. You want us to get stopped? You got the gun, Mac. That makes you the captain. Okay, okay, pull over. Listen, Regan. One yap out of you and you'll get it, see? Sure, Mac. Maybe the cops won't know who you are. They, they, they went past. They, they're after somebody else. All right if I drive now, Captain? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Only take it easy. Sure. Where are we bound for, Mac? I... I... I don't know. They got nice rooms at the Biltmore. Cut it out, Regan. Listen, McDonald, if the slogan guys get to you, you'll get it like a rat in a gutter. Shut up! And the funny part is, you weren't the guy that was up there in the canyon and witnessed the killing. How do you know that? We'll get to how I know it. Listen, Mac, I'll give you a break. I'll hide you out. Well, Regan, if... If you're trying to pull anything, I'll... I'll... Yeah? Got a better offer? Well, why, why doesn't he come? Why doesn't he come? He's coming. You sure I'll be okay here? Better in my place. Slogan mobs under me. Well, Jeffrey. Hi, Lion. A late evening holiday week call. Come in, come in, welcome. Sure, thanks. Hey, hey, sit down, both of you. I was just sitting smoking a Christmas Corona and meditating on the peace and bounty of the holiday Lion, season. Lion, I'd like to have you meet George McDonald. Yeah, how do you do? As I was saying, I was meditating on the peace and... Oh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Matt's not... Matt's going to stay here at your house with you for a couple of days, Lion. Jeffrey, you can't. You, you couldn't. You, you, you wouldn't. Yeti slogan mob and the cops are after him. He's got to hide out. Jeffrey, putting a thing like this on a sick old man. There's a thousand bucks in it for international detectives. A thousand bucks? Yes, yes, so there is. Hey, but, but why can't we turn him over to our clients? Hey, no offense to you, Mr. McDonald, but this is business. There's another way. McDonald wasn't the guy who witnessed the slogan mob killing. I find the guy who yeah, did witness it. But I thought McDonald was the witness. Well, he wasn't. He's left-handed. What, Jeffrey? McDonald's left-handed. Happy Halligan said something about that. Said Mac used to be a southpaw pitcher once. And when Mac held me up in my car tonight, he kept the gun in his left hand. That may all be very well, but... But the fellow the gas station guy identified as the witness to the slogan robout was right-handed. How do you know that? He drove into the gas station in the demonstrator car McDonald had been using. An English right-hand drive car. And he stuck his right hand with a gun in it out the car window. And the gas station guy grabbed his wrist and got the gun. It was McDonald's car and McDonald's gun. But it wasn't McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Steering wheel on the right side, right hand window, right hand out the wit Yes, yes, that's right. Where were you that night, McDonald? I, I... I don't remember. Look, you better give me all the help you can. Well, I was pulling a job. Burglary. I got sent up for it once, and I laid off. Skip that part. Uh, you didn't take the right hand drive car on the job. Is that right? I did the job with another guy who used his car. I left the demonstrator in front of my place. And then when you got home, the right-hand car was gone. The next morning, a, a guy I know that's with Slogan gave me the tip. Slogan had just put out the word to get me, so so I lammed. Your boss Halligan have duplicate keys for his demonstrators, McDonald? Sure. Well, how did your gun get into it? Maybe you'd left it in the car. I, I saw the serial number in the papers. It was an old one I lost six, eight months ago. Or maybe it was stolen from you. That might fit. What do you mean, Jeffrey? McDonald, your ex-boss, Slogan, he the kind to leave important stuff around? Maybe written on a phone pad? I, I never worked for Eddie Slogan. I got a friend Gabby knows what goes on around town, says so different. Okay, but, but I busted with Eddie five months ago. Over Naomi? How did you... Mrs. Eddie Slogan? 
She told me she was in love with you. <laughs> Not for six months. She stuck with him. Well, I'll see you, fellas. But Jeffrey, you can't leave me Take here. Take good with... care of him, Lion. And don't let the cops or Eddie Slogan shoot up the place. Jeffrey! Jeffrey! <laughs> I left the two happy pals side by side in front of the lion's molting Christmas tree. Maybe when I told the gas station kid up at the junction of the Canyon Road, the guy on McDonald's car with McDonald's gun wasn't McDonald, he'd come up with something that'd lead me to the guy who was. But it was too late to go up there till morning, so I went to my place on Taft to get some sleep. Give him something extra for expenses, Eddie Slogan says. He don't leave town like he's told. It was one of Santa Slogan's little helpers. The one with the gray eyes. He'd been waiting and he came at me, only this time he didn't have his four hits with him, so I didn't have to miss. I landed one before gray eyes got started, but when he got started, he was hard to stop. He had something white and fisted up and hard in the ends of his sleeves that kept exploding in my face like it had been imported from Oak Ridge. And then I kicked him in the stomach. He landed in the middle of the coffee table. Funny, when he came up, he had a hunk of the coffee table in his hand. All right, Regan. When I opened my eyes, Gray Eyes was gone. But somebody was coming toward me out of the kitchen. Or was I dreaming? Regan, you all right? I can't stay and help you. I can't. I can't sleep. The next morning, I went into the kitchen to make myself orange juice and coffee. I had a head. Couldn't find the juice squeezer, so I got in my car and started for the gas station up past San Bernardino. I could get breakfast along the road. I picked up the morning papers at a corner, and then I pulled over in the next block and stopped. It was a headline. The gas station guy had been murdered three hours ago. And all the papers reported something queer. The guy's military comb and brush set, his wristwatch, and his toothbrush had been stolen by whoever it was that killed him. When I got back to my place on Taft, the phone was ringing. Yeah? Jeffrey! Jeffrey, I'm glad to get you. What a night I've spent. You spend a message unit to tell me that? Yeah, but Jeffrey, there was someone lurking, lurking around the house. Eddie Slogan, social worker, maybe. I think so, Jeffrey. And George McDonald must have thought so. Yeah? yeah because Jeffrey, he became so nervous and worried that suddenly he, uh... Well, he slipped out of the house and left. Left? Yeah, half an hour well, ago. Well, why didn't you tell me? I did, Jeffrey. I just did. Yeah, you did. Well, Fatso, I got business. So long. I hung up the phone, stopped long enough to put on the new gold tie clip the lion gave me for Christmas, and drove to Beverly Boulevard. I did some arithmetic on the way. Phone pad, plus cigar holder, plus cigarette lighter stolen from the scene of the slogan mob killing, plus wristwatch, toothbrush... Russian comb set stolen when the gas station guy was murdered. I stuck a cigarette in my mouth, absent-mindedly reached down for my dashboard lighter. What I got was a hole. I added another item. Dashboard cigarette lighter stolen from Jeff Regan. A couple of blocks ahead on Beverly Boulevard was the Happy Halligan used car lot where I'd left my car the day before to ditch the black sedan full of slogan mobsters. I mentally added one more item to my list and drove past Happy Halligan's car lot and out on to Beverly Hills. Regan. Come in. Thanks. I, uh, mix your drink? No, thanks. Regan, last night. You walked I... out on me after your husband's helper sapped me. Well, I came to see you. I wanted to. to talk. Then the mug showed up and you had to hide. I hid in the kitchen. Yeah, but after he left, you beat it in case somebody came back. Well, I had to if Eddie had. You want to. Talk now. Sure. Sure. Well, 
Guess that gives you about the complete collection, lady. Hmm? What? Toothbrush, phone pad, cigar holder, wristwatch, McDonald's gun. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. My dashboard cigarette lighter when you were in my car out behind the bowling alley yesterday. My orange juice squeezer from my kitchen last night. I didn't steal anything. Well, then what's my new gold Christmas tie class doing in your hand right now? Regan, you stinking louse! Baby, maybe a racket boss's wife can afford to be a kleptomaniac. But she shouldn't mix it with murder. <laughs> That wrapped it up. Naomi was the same as signed her name to the gas station guy's murder once you figured out the key. I called the cops and they picked her up. It was a big morning for them. They'd already picked up George McDonald in North Hollywood. I dropped by the lion's house to see if he'd survived. He'd had ten pounds scared off him, but there was plenty of them left. And all those silly, useless odds and ends stolen by that woman, Mrs. Slogan, because she was a kleptomaniac. Imagine. Yeah, imagine. Ever Jeffrey... Even with the fact that she had McDonald's car and gun, how could the gas station fellow have mistaken Mrs. Slogan for McDonald when she was a woman? He didn't. He didn't? Ah, oh, the Slogans used to go up the canyon often. The gas station was at the road junction. The attendant was a young, good-looking guy. Oh, you mean she... Naomi had... stole McDonald's car to go up to see that gas station guy. She talked him into helping her frame McDonald's. <laughs> she probably never intended that the kid live long enough to give the frame away. Well... A very sweet girl, Jeffrey. No, well, but the case is over now. Oh, yeah, have a cigar, Christmas Corona. Oh, thanks. Eh, uh, light? Thanks. Hmm. Uh, seems to be out of fluid. Well, I've got my lighter. Oh, fine. Right here in my... Huh, I had it. When... It's not in your pocket, Jeffrey? Yeah, but I had it this morning when I left to go to see Naomi. Oh. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by William Frug and William Fifield, produced by Sterling Tracy, directed by Gordon T. Hughes, and stars Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Original music is by Dick Arant.